are live. Welcome to review of the 2017-2019 Marvel Netflix show, The Punisher. I realize this video is long. I'm going to do what I can to make it worth your time. And yeah, I'm going to start by telling you this was a show I really loved both seasons of. This video will have some jokes and I will get into some serious topics and I have watched every single episode of the show once each as well as the three major movies and the Dirty Laundry Punisher short and I this is gonna be a spoiler free review if I decide I will spoil anything, I will verbally warn before I do so and hold up an index finger so you can mute and skip ahead until you see me lower my index finger. I will be spoiling Marvel leading up to this show. So, for example, Daredevil Season 2. And, yeah. So, this follows Frank Castle, Marine veteran, as he... <sighs> I suppose, yeah, um, he tries to get revenge for his family's murder and basically try to come to terms with if that is all he is now, if, if he is just a, a killer. Now... The, um, let's see. Before you start watching the show, you should almost definitely watch Daredevil. Daredevil Season 2 is where the Punisher is introduced. Daredevil Season 2 is not going to make that much sense to you if you haven't watched Daredevil Season 1. But yeah, uh, hypothetically, you could just watch Daredevil Season 1 and 2 and then the, um, the two seasons of this. That... Uh, you, you don't need to have watched all of Marvel Netflix. So, the writing... Uh, let's see. So, um, yeah, this was created by Steve Lightfoot, who also wrote nine episodes. And... There we go. Yeah, so... <clears throat> The writing, they do a good job of making every character distinct. And, like, you can... Um, yeah, one thing I quite appreciate about this, that, for example, a number of 80s action movies don't have. In this, you know, bad guys use tactics. Uh, the, the ones that have had training, you know. And, yeah, that obviously makes it substantially more difficult for Frank because he is under, uh, um, outmanned, that's the word. And that makes things much more interesting. Uh, it's a show that has things that it wants to discuss. It's not just a lot of violence. And, you know, part of that is the, the budget. They couldn't just have it be nonstop violence for two seasons, both of which are 13 episodes each. But they did also realize, you know, this is a character that you can use to explore some ideas, some, some, yeah. Uh, I would definitely say you can very easily tell that this wasn't made in, you know, when one of the movies were made. This is not from 1989, 2004. Uh, which, I forget... I'll, I'll really quickly find, because right now I do not recall, um, Warzone is from 2008. You know, this is very much a product of the late, uh, I guess 2010s, yes. Um, and, you know, it's sort of kind of in continuity with the MCU this has a really excellent pilot. Um, it sets up the 
or you know, season opener, season one opener, if you will. Technically, it's not a pilot episode. You know, it sets up the the kind of ah, uh, yeah. You know, you you get a sense of where Frank is, um, and the the yeah, how he means to go on with with his life and yeah you meet some some major characters and you start getting a sense of the overall plot i would definitely say this is one of those things where honestly if the pilot if, if the season yeah i'm gonna call it pilot because it rolls off the tongue easier than season one opener if the pilot does not appeal to you, there's some chance this show just isn't for you. And that includes possibly if you are a fan of the comics. It's not a direct, you know, one-to-one. -one. They changed some, some, some important things while trying to stay true to the core, but also trying to make sure that the show didn't come across as promoting what Frank does. And the finale, I suppose, actually, yeah, um, both season openers are great and really quickly get you, give you an idea of what the season is going to be like. Both season finales are also great. This is one of those cases where the show was cancelled rather than being allowed to, to run the full, um, you know, yeah, they would have liked to make more, but, you know. Disney Plus was happening, so Netflix, yeah, uh, the Netflix Marvel shows were all cancelled. And it's not quite clear if there will be more Punisher anytime soon, at least official. And the, um, ah, what's the word? Right, yes. So if you, you know, if you decide to watch the two seasons, you might be left wanting there to be at least one more season but it does not end on a cliffhanger so if you just want you know i record this um i just got done recording the video talking about talking spoilers for season two um so so yeah by now i guess it's maybe two hours since i got done watching season two and when i started watching it i knew there wasn't a season three yeah, you know, it basically, it, it, yeah, the, the story threads are wrapped up by, the, you know, yeah, basically both season finales. And yeah, you might be left wanting more, but you're not going to be left with a story that isn't fully told. And that brings us to the direction so, the, let's see, yeah, despite the government's efforts, we do now know that American military men did war crimes, committed war crimes in the Middle East, and I really appreciate this show confronting that. And the show interrogates whether or not vigilantism gets the intended results. Now, let's see. The, the show enters the gun control debate clumsily, misrepresenting the progressive point of view as just out of touch with gritty reality, and the right wing is just concerned. And this is the worst time to fumble this kind of thing. Gun deaths are extremely high in the U.S. now and when the show was on the air. And all that's needed to cut that down by a huge amount is political will. Progressives are not trying to prevent anyone, everyone from having a gun. What we're fighting for is to make sure that people who have been convicted of violent offenses can't get a gun. Because statistics show that they are more likely to use the gun not for self-defense, but on someone who is not a danger to them. We're trying to make sure that things like m large magazine sizes, high-powered ammunition, the gun show loophole become illegal. And this isn't about what people feel about this issue. The numbers show that a huge amount of people in America die because of a lack of gun control. It's ridiculous, dis ridiculously disingenuous how the show... I'm not going to give away exactly what it does, but basically there is a character that we by then empathize with 
you know, saying, well, some people do need a gun for self-defense. We progressives are not trying to take away small guns from people who live in dangerous neighborhoods, provided they aren't beating their partner. Now, let's see. Yeah, so, um... If you have a show where the first season is very focused, then it can be really effective if the second season, or at least one of the follow-up seasons, really goes and toys with what is set up in the first season. Maybe characters that have a lot of power lose that power, or vice versa. Maybe a major character loses something that used to define them, then has to come up with a new identity. So a short list of shows that do this, not all of them in season two, Prison Break, Dexter, Alias, various Star Trek shows, Burn Notice, and yeah, all of these, uh, I will really quickly name all of them. So, Daredevil, Jessica Jones, Luke Cage, Iron Fist, and The Punisher. Now, let's see. Right, so uh, some critics point out, in the comics, he started out as Rambo, a Vietnam War vet. He came back, but the war didn't end for him, so he went to war on organized crime. And that is something the show does understand, which, you know, at the end of the day, not all of the movies uh, get that right about the character. And without the, he changed one war for another element... You know, I mean, you have a lot of vig vigilantes using guns, especially in movies, not as much in, in comic books. So, that brings us to the character. So, John Bernthal plays Frank Castle, the Punisher, a vigilante who aims to fight the criminal underworld by any means necessary, no matter how lethal the results. And, let's see... Right, uh, Daredevil Season 1 showrunner Stephen S. D. Knight said this version of Punisher would be completely the Marvel version as previous portrayals did not appear under the Marvel Studios' Marvel Television banner. However, Bernthal did study all the previous portrayals, saying once you devour and eat up as much as you can, my way is to make it as personal as possible on how Castle resonates with him. Bernthal said, He ain't got an effing cape. He ain't got any superpowers. He's an effing tortured, angry father and husband who's living... In this unbelievable world of darkness and loss and torment. Bernthal added that there would be a military component in the series since Castle is a soldier. The series will be somewhat centered on that. He also stated that the character was portrayed on Daredevil Season 2 was sort of the origin tale of how this guy became the Punisher, why he put on the vest. Bernthal noticed he or noted notes. Bernthal noted he always wanted to preserve the essence of Castle, who Bernthal described as brutal, damaged, and tortured by exploring the pain and what's behind the violence and the reason why he's committing the violence that is utterly satisfying and addictive for him. You know, this is a man who can kill you with anything or nothing. So many possibilities, it seems his life can never get boring. Now, when I watched Fury, I really noticed John Bernthal. So when I heard that he was cast as the Punisher back when Daredevil Season 2 introduced, you know, I, I only recently watched these shows, but I did hear that he was cast as Punisher when Daredevil Season 2 originally premiered on Netflix. I knew that they had made the right choice. Obviously, it's not that he should do the exact same performance as in Fury, but that kind of intensity and trauma. And yeah, I'm very happy with how he does on this show. And I'm aware that he has been on other stuff. Uh, I don't... This, these are the only two things I know him from. John apparently stays in character off camera, which is annoying for others. I, I recommend the Cavernacles video talking about him. I won't get into what Cavernacle talks about in that video in this video. Now, this really embraces the PTSD he suffers from, exploring how it affects his relationship with other people, even other vets with PTSD. I appreciate the show pointing out that trauma like PTSD can lead to behavior that the ignorant might mistake for mental impairment. And, you know, at times we actually see him dreaming of his children and wife as if they are still alive. You know, he is stuck reliving the trauma of losing them so suddenly, abruptly. And, yeah, um, Frank is yet another reluctant 
hero, or in this case, anti-hero. Five solo and one team up, six for six, Marvel Netflix shows, the hero or anti-hero has to be reluctant. It's kind of silly. And, and in the case of the team up, reluctant team up. Let's see. And yeah, um, some of the, the episodes go into the American government not taking care of veterans. I really appreciate that it's a show that makes clear not all male aggression is a positive, which is obviously important for a show where the male lead kills people. Let's see. And yeah, um, Frank is at this uh, group therapy meeting for veterans and a Christian nationalist there talks about a civil war. Another thing that is important for the show to criticize. A lot of Christian nationalists love the titular character. Let's see. And th this show does depict Frank trying to be a good husband and father. That's very important for a story where a lot of the iterations start with the brutal death of them and they aren't really important or make a significant difference for the rest of the story. Uh, you know, the fact that he was, you know, yeah, yeah, he was a good husband and father and the, the love that his family showed him, you know, is extremely important to the character, so... Yeah, it's important to show what he's like as a husband and father. And yeah, this is a very complex show. Some of the comics are as well, but a lot of them is just a lot of badass action. To be sure, badass. And this show does have a lot of badass action as well. I really appreciate that they went for something more complex here. It deals with whistleblowers like Edward Snowden, Chelsea Manning, government agency corruption... Religious extremists who want political power, the radicalized, the de-radicalized. These are the kinds of things that make sense to explore today in this kind of show. Frank rarely smiles outside of happy flashbacks with the family. He can be calm on a mission, waiting for the right time, even as he knows that when the time is right, he's going to be brutally killing people. You know, sometimes when he's not sure how to proceed, when things go badly, he can get agitated, almost physically shaking Often his voice is barely more than a whisper. He is no longer used to social interaction. These are signs of trauma, and it's written and performed incredibly convincingly. And he is devoted to his friends and merciless with his enemies. Let's see. <clears throat> um, yeah, so, some critic quotes. Punisher excels when it tackles issues too complex for concrete answers. Portrayals of the troops can, for me, fall into two categories. Propaganda level glorification or crippling... Right, propaganda level glorification or crippling nihilism. Throughout the 13 episodes of season one, we spend time with a multitude of veterans, all with distinct personalities, motivations, and experiences. We're showing that soldiers aren't merely just... Good guys or bad guys, but they are people. We see them not as war machines, but as human beings thrust into something bigger and more horrific than any civilian could imagine. The series doesn't pretend to answer the larger questions regarding enlistments, military military privatization or war as a whole. Instead, it tries to highlight the complexity of America's post-war climate and the frustrations of those living in the country they fought for. And... Yeah, uh, comic book Frank Castle loves killing. The show version doesn't. He's at times conflicted. What works in a comic book doesn't necessarily translate well to live action. And today you have to be very careful about inspiring copycats. And yeah, I'm going to go ahead and try. Eben Moss Bachrock plays David Lieberman, a former NSA analyst. And let's see. Yeah, the um, he has a relationship with Frank, um, and as relationships with Frank after the death of his family go, it's, you know, yeah, as as usual, it's not completely pleasant of a relationship. 
But yeah, uh, they share great chemistry and really are... Um, they spend more than a little time together. And it allows... But basically, it's a show that makes sure to not just let Frank be completely alone for just a huge amount of time because this is not really the kind of show that could pull off narration the way that, you know, say, 300 could. Um, and we, we really have to have more com complexity than just, you know, he's, he's going around killing people, brutalizing people. And when Frank spends time with someone who doesn't think that you should just go around killing people you think or, you know, everyone you think, you know, deserve it, then he has to explain the way he sees things and get challenged on, you know, and, and kind of confront, you know, yeah, like I mentioned in the, the plot section, is this really, you know, has he... Has he got nothing left to offer the world other than just going around killing people? Ben Barnes plays Billy Russo, Castle's uh, best friend from when they served in Force Recon together. And he runs Anvil, a private military corporation. And yeah, um, if you just... If you don't know anything about him other than, you know, a, he apparently, uh, let me see real quick. He's apparently like a singer and he's, he's good. Um, you know, there's a couple of music videos of him. Uh, let's see. Is it just two? Uh, yeah, two, two music videos one lyric video and yeah you know um he's a good singer he's talented yeah if if that's the only thing you know about him you might think oh pretty boy he doesn't have anything other than you know he's he's a good singer he's attractive that's it but he can really act like i i didn't know anything about him before i started watching this i was actually surprised that they did hire someone who's like a singer but I don't know. I mean, I guess today a bunch of singers are acting, you know, as, lo as long as they're talented, it's fine. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Um, he does a really, really incredible job. Like, he, he has to do some very heavy lifting, and he always nails it. Like, I am I am very impressed, and I, I'm going to have to find something else to watch him in, because he's just, he's, he's deeply compelling. Amber Rose Riva plays Dina Madani, an Iranian-American DHS special agent. And she is... Yeah, she's part of an investigation that makes her very relevant to the, the story. Riva noted that Madani sees herself as American. That's what her being is. That's what she wants to protect. That's why she does what she does. Now, uh, Madani is not based on a character from the comics, so Riva's research was more was based more on Homeland and what it's like for those people, the logical processes the character would be going through. I think for a lot of actors, if you're playing someone from comics, you probably feel you have some sort of responsibility to represent this character in a light that reflects how they were represented in the comic books. Because I didn't have that, it probably left me to be more open in my representation. And, yeah, in addition to speaking to actual Homeland officers, she spoke with Iranian people to make that part of the character authentic. And, yeah, um, also very compelling character. Um, you really... Uh, something that really comes across very strongly is that she is, like... There's, there's a very early scene where someone basically says, oh, you know, she's... She's the the reason that she is has, is as high up in the ranks as she is, is that someone th thought, oh, we have to have a woman, uh, you know, someone with some some family in the Middle East, so, you know, th these kinds of things, and I think they specifically had that so that the audience would 
be even more aware not only of the fact that that's something that people like her have to deal with but how much that's just not true of her and of countless other minorities who have important positions yeah she is she is very very driven and and yeah um in more than one scene madani and her mother talk and it feels a lot like the scene is informed by their Iranian heritage. I do not think it would be the same if they were two white women So in, in America. So, yeah, I really appreciate that. Um, now, um, let's see. I think... I think I will just say, yeah, so, um, yeah, I also want to wanna highlight Daniel Weber playing Lewis Wilson, a young U.S. Army veteran struggling with his new life as a taxi driver. He attends group therapy sessions with other servicemen under Curtis Hoyle. Weber felt his character was a mirror to Frank. And... Paul Schultz, I don't think I want to give away exactly what he plays, but yeah, he's he's really, really great uh, here and elsewhere. Jason R. Moore plays Curtis Hoyle, a friend of Castle, one of the few people who knows he is still alive, former U.S. Navy SARC, who became the leader of a therapy group after losing the lower part of his left leg in combat. And you really get a sense, like, he really wants to help, and he realizes how much, you know, how, how much it means to veterans to have access to group therapy. Let's see, and... You know, and, and he doesn't, you know, if, if yeah, um, there are some people at group therapy who say some pretty messed up things, and he's basically, you know, he's, he's the good kind of, of group therapy leader. He's, you know, like, basically, you're not allowed to, like, verbally attack someone else or, like, question their courage or that kind of thing, but... You know, if you if you have something, you know, if you have something in your head that you really want to say, as long as it's not, you know, an attack of someone in group, yeah, you know, you you're allowed to say it. And if you start attacking someone else, then he will, you know, try to stop that, you know. But beyond that, yeah. Uh, Michael Nathanson plays Sam Stein. An HSI special agent who works with Madani, and he's also really great. Um, I don't know how much I want to. Uh, yeah, Jamie Ray Newman plays Sarah Lieberman, David's wife. Deborah Ann Wall plays Karen Page, which is also part of why it's important to know at least some Daredevil stuff, or it's gonna make. No sense to... Uh, yeah. A reporter at the New York Bulletin. And, uh, yeah. You know, uh, like like I said, I am spoiling Daredevil Season 2. She befriended Castle after working on his case. And... Let's see. Yeah, uh, apparently since the show was cancelled, she has expressed concern that her career is stalling, possibly ending. I really hope that isn't the case. She is tremendously talented. And I think that is... Um, yeah, Josh Stewart appears and does a really great job. Floriana Lima. Um... Yeah, uh, plays Krista Dumont, a psychotherapist for military veterans. And... Let's see... Um... I think I will leave it at that. 
Oh, right. I didn't look up that, but that is that actor. I thought I recognized them. Huh. Cool. That... Right, I will just briefly say, um, Mary Elizabeth Mastrantonio also appears on the show, and she's still got it. She's still an incredibly talented actress. Like, um, I, you know, I, I believe, I, th I think Scarface was the very first thing she appeared in, and, you know, yeah, uh, uh, let's see, so yeah, 80, 83... And she's from 58, and, and yeah, she's still incredibly talented. It's, it's, yeah, um, thoroughly impressed that, uh, yeah. And, um, I don't know if the reason her character's first name is Marion is because she was made Marion in that one Robin Hood movie but I mean yeah that's a that's a fun little bit of um ah, what's it called um fun reference for the show to make now yeah, so uh, this fares reasonably in diversity in, in casting, and it does also try to understand the unique perspectives of its minor minority characters. So, you know, um, Iranian-American, Jewish, Black, yeah. Um, and And for each, you know, you can tell that some of their life experiences are informed by, yeah. Uh, the dialogue is quite good. Everybody really has their own voice. And just, yeah. Um, very, very quotable dialogue. And they tend to do a good job of getting across stuff like exposition, characterization, and such, without it being really awkward and obnoxious and the cinematography is quite good there are some long takes during action scenes and action scenes like occasionally you can tell okay maybe they didn't have the budget to go as big here so you know it's it's kind of small but otherwise you can tell what's going on in action scenes. It's easy to follow. The um, the flow of action scene is is quite good. There are a number of really standout fights that would not be half as good as they are if not for the cinematography. The editing is also quite good, and it does a really good job, for example, underlining the, the trauma. Um... You know, sometimes, like, Frank can barely block out the, the, you know, the noise of his family dying, for example. And, and yeah, the, the special effects, you know, it tends to be practical. There are a couple of, like, bits where, you know, okay, that was... That was probably CG or, or something along those lines. But, yeah, it, it really doesn't take over. You know, this is one of the one of, of the of the various Marvel Netflix shows. You know, this is the one that has the least expectation. You know, there's no superpowers here. Uh, Frank doesn't have superpowers. So, and, and, you know, a lot of the people he's fighting, it's like people, you know, human beings. They don't have, they're not enhanced individuals as Cap would say. So, yeah. Um, you know, they, they don't have to have that kind of special effects. But it would be a little, you know, I mean, they have a budget. Let's, let's do some cool special effects. So instead, it's stuff like, you know, there, there are people who get really messed up by brutal violence. You know, the, the gore. Yeah. Some really excellent stunts. 
the the fights are you know get a lot out of the the solid stunt work now this was shot around new york let's see queens brooklyn and yeah and and really gets a lot out of that and it's not only set in new york and the the other settings also feel i, I don't know if they went to two places or they just found some that looked a lot like it or what but yeah there's a, a lot okay uh for some okay there we go yeah there's a lot of of good production value uh the action scenes are absolutely amazing um so yeah uh chases on foot and in vehicles physical fights shooting including shooting while in vehicles you know tense suspenseful badass action guns with some great gunplay you know not all of the show has a lot of guns but chunks of the show have a lot of of guns uh let's see yeah car chases the most brutal action of marvel netflix so far yes more than the first two seasons of daredevil that's saying a lot you know people are shot in the face point blank run over just yeah the music is composed by Tyler Bates, who has 63 movie credits as composer. And as a quick... Oh, actually, yeah, some of it is... Some of them are music videos. So thanks for that, IMDb, um, for listing those in the same... Anyway... Yeah, uh, he did the music for Deadpool 2, uh, let's see, some John Wick, Atomic Blonde, Guardians of the Galaxy 1 and 2, um, Sucker Punch, Halloween, the, the 2009 Halloween 2, Watchmen, um, 300, so, so yeah, you know, he can do really epic music and he does a really really great job so yeah um the um yeah if you if you want to listen to the the score and you know i yeah certainly i would recommend you know here on youtube just do a search for you know soundtrack for the soundtrack of this soundtrack and then the show title yeah, you can you can listen to a, a lot of it, possibly all of it. Uh, yeah, the score has classics like Dean Martin. It has metal, country, some 80s pop, Tom Waits. I'm not entirely sure what for. And let's see. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, uh, Tyler Bates has collaborated with directors like Zack Snyder, Rob Zombie, Neil Marshall, William Frickin... Scott Derrickson, James Gunn, Chad Stahelski, and David Leitch. In addition, he is also the former lead guitarist of the American rock band Marilyn Manson and produced its albums The Pale Emperor and Heaven Upside Down, which is how you get the angels to come out. And yeah, um, he does a really solid job here. And there, there are times where it is just like, okay, let's not pretend. Some, some of what we're here for is some really badass action. Let's put some metal on and just watch people shooting each other, you know? So, yeah. And that brings us... So, yes, the, the pacing. I don't know who at Netflix decided that most of these shows, you know, the, basically they... they they made the decision that the norm for Marvel Netflix television shows was 13 episodes to every season, regardless of if they think they have enough story there. There are two exceptions to this. Iron Fist Season 2 is 10 episodes. The Defenders is 8. Both of those are paced better than the other ones, so I really wish that they had just done that as as more of a of a thing but for some reason i i will acknowledge that there is there there can be pacing issues 
in... Wow, it's been a while since I talked about them. I want to say they're called network television shows, so like something like A Prison Break or Without a Trace, Buffy, um, you know, these kinds of things where a season will be 22 or 24 episodes of these 42-minute long episodes. And there is definitely some... Sometimes the pacing is better here because in in these Marvel Netflix shows because they aren't they they don't have to be 42 minutes long you know some of them are like an hour long some of them are 40 some minutes long so but at the end of the day like it really does not feel like there I I don't think it was because they thought that it would be perfect for all of these shows to have 13 episodes to every season I think it was probably a financial decision of some kind. Maybe they figured that longer than that, they couldn't get people to binge the entire season in a single sitting. Maybe that was, you know... I, just, I really wish that they had just tried to tailor the length, the, the amount of episodes, the way they do the, the length of the individual episodes, more to what is the story that is being told here. Because as it is, you have some episodes of both seasons of, of all of the, you know, all of these shows have episodes of, you know, there's at least one episode for every single 13 episode season where you can point to and say, that's an episode that exists because there's a minimum, you know, they, they have to make 13. They, one way or another, they have to make 13. So sometimes very little will happen in an episode. I'm not going to claim that there's any episode of this that I don't love and would happily watch again. But it's definitely something, you know, the, the pacing suffers. Now, the, um, yeah, you know, with, with um, before you get into it, you know, yeah, before you get into season one, just... Give it the entire season opener. And if by the end of that, you really don't care about what happens next. Yeah, I'm not sure. Okay, maybe maybe give it a couple more episodes since something that they do since they have to fill 13 episodes. Is that the first couple of episodes, very little might happen. But yeah, um, and the same for... Yeah, actually, for both of these, I would say watch the first three episodes of the season for both seasons before you decide on whether or not to watch the rest of it. So, the best element of this show is the exploration of trauma. The, uh, let's see, and, and yeah, you know, if you, uh, I think uh, trauma, you know, doesn't make the world go around, but it does make the world go in circles. Trauma is something we have to deal with, and the first step to dealing with it is to have healthy and intelligent exploration of it in our media. So, you know, that is something we need more of. So, yeah, uh, if you, like me, are passionate about that kind of thing, you know, honestly, uh, let's see, I guess... Other, yeah, this, but also the... Um, uh, certainly the first two seasons of Jessica Jones. I haven't watched the third yet. I'll start, like, tomorrow, I think. Um... Some also, uh, Luke Cage and Daredevil. Uh, not that much Iron Fist overall. Uh, uh maybe season two. Uh, yeah, and if, if you're gonna watch season two, you gotta watch season one. But, yeah. So, the worst aspect of this show is definitely these things that... Where it does not handle the, for example, the, the gun control debate well. Ultimately, I, you know, it's not something that's going to, like, ruin one episode after another, necessarily. But it does show up multiple times, and, you know, personally, I thought it was a problem. And, let's see. Yeah, so, um, other reviews a number of people were frustrated at things changed from the source material uh i don't think it's a big deal but i understand why people are passionate about it 
The thing I was most worried about was that the show would be glorifying the Punisher's actions, and there are times where that is what it does, but it does also at times explore if, uh, yeah, if it's a good idea. The thing I was most looking forward to was a show taking PTSD and triggering seriously, and the show lived up to my expectations. And yeah, um, the season one opener, let's see, how do I, yeah, so season one has a great opener, finale, and the overall season is great. Season two has a great opener, finale, and the overall season is great. And, um, I can't really describe any standout episodes without spoiling something important. Um, I'll just say that they, they make some really interesting decisions in, in a number of these episodes. Um, the trailers do give too much away, but also give you a good idea of what the, the show is like. Uh, cover and poster don't give too much away. And that brings us to Rotten Tomatoes. So, Season 1 has the critics' consensus, A rocky start can't keep the Punisher from pushing the boundaries of Marvel's TV universe with a fresh take on the comics-derived action thriller. It has a 67% from critics, based on 79 ratings, and 88% based for, for the audience, based on 6,000... 539 ratings and let's see yeah so of the of the 79 53 are fresh and the average rating for users is 4.3 out of 5 so yeah that's and season 2 has the consensus the Punisher's second season leaves fans torn between the undeniably action-packed fun and the underwhelming portrayal of the charismatic Frank Castle it has a 61% from critics, based on 36 ratings, 22 of them fresh, and a 66% audience score, based on 2,204 user ratings, and the average rating being 3.4. Everything below a... Wait, can that be... Ah, no, never mind. Um... And on Metacritic, let's see, I briefly, there we go. So on Metacritic, it has a 55 from critics based on 26 uh, re reviews, 8 positive, 16 mixed, 2 negative, and let's see. So of the 26, uh, oh, right, uh, hold on, can I, if I do this, okay, so, yeah, of the, of the 26, you know, six of them are for season two, the other 20 are for season one, and the user score is 6.5 out of 10 based on 137 ratings, 92 positive, 11 mixed, 34 negative. So, yeah, some people did not. Um, let's see. Okay, so the ones that are in English. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten uh, user reviews in English. And let's see. So... Yeah, two of them are mixed, three are negative, and the remaining six are positive. Now, on IMDb, it... Huh. I apparently didn't copy in... Well, okay. Um, on IMDb, it has an 8.5 out of 10, based on 238,387... MDB user votes, so 30.5% gave it 10, 28.9 gave it 9, 23.4 gave it 8, 9.9 .9 gave it 7, 3.4 gave it 6, 1.4 gave it 1. That sounds to me like they have issue with the with the content more than 
that they think that it's badly um, from a technical aspect. And I, I can definitely empathize. Um, and 1.3% gave it 5, and then around half a percent gave it 4, 3, and 2, respectively. So yeah, this um, this was pretty positively received by, by users. Um, there are 859 IMDb user reviews, 692 without spoilers. And... Oh, did I not? I'm going to really quickly check, because that does not sound right to me. Um, so... Uh, yeah, so 36 of the 88 links in the IMDb external reviews section worked and were in English. Um, yeah, if you know, if if you're watching this and you really just want to know, you know, how violent is this show? Is it really going to deliver? You know, if, if all you want is the, the kind of violence you get in a lot of the comics and, you know, yeah, really the, the, the movies have decent, especially the, the, um, the 2008 one. Um, yeah, there is a lot of violence in this. It is uh, very realistically handled. A um, lot of practical effects uh, went into it. And, yeah, you know, a lot of, lot of blood, a lot of people shot and beaten, a lot of dead bodies. Yeah, if you, know, if you just want, if, if that's the only thing you want out of this, you know, obviously you're, you know, you, maybe you're bored for the rest of it, but for sure... It is a show that delivers those things. Yeah. Now, um, this is, you know, all of Marvel Netflix is currently available on Disney+. Plus. This does not have any special features, but it does have all of both seasons. And, you know, the entire MCU. So if you're into the MCU, yeah. And, and the MCU, there's a lot of special features for the MCU movies. For, for the MCU movies. There we go. Uh, put the emphasis on the wrong syllable for a second there. That is not, uh, uh, at least, yeah, I, I believe a number of those things are not on home releases for the MCU movies. So, yeah. Um... Ultimately, where I come down on is that this, I, I rate this nine brutal, violent, complex character pieces out of ten. And, yeah, so, uh, ranking all the, all of Marvel Netflix, worst to best. The only season I don't love is Iron Fist Season 1. So, Iron Fist Season 1, Daredevil Season 2. The Defenders, Punisher Season 1, Punisher Season 2, Iron Fist Season 2, Daredevil Season 3, Luke Cage Season 2, Luke Cage Season 1, Daredevil Season 1, Jessica Jones Season 2, and Jessica Jones Season 1. And worst to best, filmed Punisher, both the film or show, as well as the Punisher's actor's performance. And I love all other than the 89 one, and the 89 one, it's not bad. I, I don't think it's as bad as people say. 89, 2004, Warzone, Season 1 and Season 2. So, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what do you hope for the future of the Punisher character. Which, um, let's see. Yeah, what, what villain do you hope to see, for example? Yeah, if you like this video, please thumbs up, subscribe, hit that little bell. There should be a link to my main channel page, one, two more links to stuff like irrelevant playlists, a suggested video for you to watch on screen right about now. I put out one vlog per week reviewing and sharing spoiler thoughts on a movie. And let's see. And one talking about my spoiler thoughts on the most recent episode of the Willow TV show or streaming show. And recently, the review and thoughts videos didn't come out very similar to this one, but with the thoughts in the same video instead of in a separate video, since it's running time is significantly shorter than a show. If you want to hear my thoughts, I meant to say that are in the video. 
If you want to hear my thoughts on the in, the two individual seasons of the show, the link will be in the description box, and there will also you can also find uh, you know I've by now done videos on everything Punch. Well, I haven't done a separate video for the um, ah what's it called Dirty Laundry. I I talk about it briefly at the very end of my video for season two of of this show. And let's see. Right. In other words, if you want videos like this, you're in luck. You can check out my back catalog as well as catch my video next week. I hope you enjoyed watching as I enjoyed watching and recording. And I will catch you next time.